Most everyone who has a telescope will eventually discover that they can take a picture of the moon or the planets with nothing more than the camera that's in their cell phone. Simply hold up the camera in front of the eyepiece and take a picture. But soon after that, you begin to wonder how you can take even better pictures. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a great picture of Jupiter with nothing more than a webcam. This is Celestron's Next Image 5 astrophotography camera, which is just a webcam with no lens. It comes with a hollow cylinder that screws onto the camera. The cylinder is the same size as the eyepiece, and you simply replace the eyepiece of your telescope with the camera. Your telescope then becomes the lens for your webcam. Now I recommend you don't use the diagonal, that you just plug the camera directly into the telescope. The diagonal causes you to have a mirror image, and it's just one more piece of optics that will block and distort the photons. You're going to need a telescope that has a mount that can take out the Earth's rotation, which can be about 20 Jupiter diameters in one minute. Nexstar 5SE handles that just fine. You're going to see a live view of Jupiter on your computer screen. And your job is to take a 30 to 60 second movie of Jupiter using the software that comes with your camera. This is the software that comes with the Next Image 5 webcam. It's called iCap. For you to follow along, you want to make sure you have the same toolbars here I have by going into View, Toolbars, Toolbar Manager, and I have selected Device Bar, Recording Bar, and Exposure Bar. The first thing we want to do is push this little button right here, select Output Video File. I selected Enable Automatic Video File Name Generation. I found a target directory. This is where you're going to put all your AVI files that you make. I've typed in Jupyter here for the file name prefix, because we're going to be taking pictures of Jupyter. And I selected timestamp with the year, month, date, hour, minute, second feature. That way later on you can know when your pictures were taken. Your file name is unique every second. So when you hit record, you're going to create an AVI with this file name. Over here on the advanced tab, I've selected stop recording after capturing a thousand frames. So say OK to that. Then the next thing we got to do is get Jupiter in our tiny field of view. It's often you won't see it, so you can crank up the gain and give it more exposure time. But it's most likely outside of the field of view. So go into the 5 megapixel mode, select 20% for the view size. And ultimately, we're going to go back to 640 by 480, which is just this tiny little piece in the middle here. So you got to put Jupiter in that. If you see Jupiter off to the side here, move your telescope until Jupiter's in the center of the picture. Also notice that when you're in this mode 2592 by 1944, that you can only get up to 6 frames per second. And of course, it'll create huge files. So we go back to 640 by 480 and back to 100%. And now I noticed you can get your 50 frames per second. My computer can't really handle that. I can get maybe 35. Also, you're not going to do more than your exposure time. And with F10 on Jupiter, I, I need about 144th of a second here. You can crank the gain up and get shorter exposures, but then the picture's kind of grainy. I put it around here. So pretend that there's Jupiter here in the middle of the screen, and then we hit the record button. It'll make a thousand frame AVI file and then stop. And now it's created a single AVI with a thousand frames in it, in that folder that we told it to go to. Now, of course, this file that we just created doesn't have anything in it. It's just a blank picture. So we'll be using this picture here, which does have Jupiter, and I created it a few weeks ago. 
We will take this file with a thousand images and feed it to Registax, which will then create a single, very sharp picture of Jupiter. Looks like it's taken from the Hubble. This is Registax version 6. This is free software that will take the AVI file that comes out of ICAP and convert it into a single high quality image of Jupiter. There is no documentation for this software. We learn how to use it by spending hours of experimenting and watching YouTube videos. I'm going to show you what works for me. I get pretty good results. The first thing I do is click on select, browse to find the AVI file that came out of the ICAP, open that. The thing prompts you by underlining with a green bar what you're supposed to do next. I'm going to do the align points manually. I notice down here it says this is frame 1 out of 1004. Using this slider I can see every frame. I pick a frame that's particularly clear and start putting in the align points. I'm pretending like I know how the software works. I suspect it's looking for a mishmash of evenly spaced points that it can grab onto to know how much to distort the image due to the air turbulence from one frame to the next. By picking points where there's a, a gradient, it has a better chance of knowing where it is. Then I click on the next underlined thing is a line. I'm using default settings as far as I know. And we wait down here for the progress bar to finish. The next thing that's underlined is limit. It's not going to use all 1,000 frames. It's going to throw away some and you get to decide how that's done. I watched the AVI earlier. It looks like less than half of the images are any good. So I'm going to select best frames percent, select 40 percent, click limit. Now it threw away just 600 of the bad frames. Somehow it knows which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones. Then you click stack. Again, I'm using default settings as far as I know. And again, we wait for the progress bar to finish. Finally, we have a single stacked image of the best 400 frames out of the thousand. Now the magic occurs when we click on wavelet. From watching YouTube videos, I notice people tend to just pull these little sliders out a little bit more so than others and they're looking to see what happens. Each individual slide doesn't produce a big change so I find that by putting in big changes and saving them and then switching back and forth you can see what happens and what I learned is that each one of these is identical unless you change denoise or sharpen values. One place I found said that these work on different frequencies but I can show you that's not true going from 25 to 100 starting at layer 1 it's 25 40 55 up to 100 I get this image of Jupiter by switching to sweep from 100 down to 25 it's going the exact opposite direction the picture doesn't change a bit so what I'm going to do I'm going to reset this back to zero I'm going to turn off everything except the first slider set that to maximum sharpen it by clicking this button five times it moves the value from 0.1 to 0.15 then I click on this denoise button five times it moves the value from 0 to 0.25 those values seem to work okay for this AVI then I come over here click on histogram move this little red slider to the other side of this bump. This bump represents all the black space and it's not purely black until I push the stretch button. I convert all those pixels to absolute zero. Next I come over here click on the gamma function something like that seems to be appropriate and then RGB balance auto balance then I hit the do all 
and save image, find out where I want to save it. And there's the final product, a single picture, which is way better than any of the individual frames in the AVI file. And quite amazingly good, I think, for a 5-inch telescope.